Yes, hello everybody. Hope you have an amazing day. Today's topic is about the salivary gland, which in mammals are exocrine glands, glands with ducts that produce saliva, which is formed of several things including amylase, digestive enzyme that breaks down starch into maltose and glucose. In humans and some other mammals, the secretion is alpha amylase, also known as ptyalin. The major salivary glands are paired organs with long ducts that empty into the oral cavity. These are three pairs of major salivary glands, the parotid, submandibular, and sublingual, and there are also the presence of numerous small glands situated in the mucosa of the lips, cheeks, tongue, and palate. The large salivary glands are compound tubular alveolar glands. The large salivary gland is covered by a connective tissue capsule. Septa divide the gland into labials. The major salivary glands consist of secretory portion and duct system. The secretory portion consists of two general types of cells, the secretory and myoepithelial cells. The secretory types of cells are the serous and mucus. The serous cells are pyramidal in shape with a broad base resting on the basal lamina and a narrow apical surface facing the lumen. They have characteristics of polarized protein secreting cells. Nuclei are spherical and placed near the center of the cell. The basal part of cytoplasm takes a deep basic stain due to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The supranuclear part contains large serous granules. While the second type of secretory portion is the mucus cells, which are large, pale, with oval nuclei in the basal parts, the cytoplasm contains large mucinogen granules. The second type of cells are the myoepithelial cells, which are also called the basket cells. They have many long cytoplasmic processes and surround serous acini, mucous tubules, and intercolloidal ducts. These cells are of epithelial origin but contain myofibrils in their cytoplasm and help in the explosion of secretion. There are distinguished three types of secretory portions the serous acini, mucous tubules, and mixed acini. The serous acini, which consists of only serous cells. The mucous tubules consisting of only of mucous cells and are tubular. And the last type is the mixed acini, which consists of both types of secretory cells. The serous cells form caps surrounding the terminal part of the mucous cells. There is also the duct system, which consists of intercolloidal ducts, intralabular, intralabular. And main duct. The intercolloidal duct leads from acini and are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. The second is the intralabular or striated. Ducts are lined by simple columnar epithelium and characterized by radial striations that extend from the basis of the cells to the level of the nuclei. The striation consists of unfolding of the basal plasma membrane with numerous elongated mitochondria that are aligned parallel to the enfolded membranes. There's also the interlobular or excretory duct. Ducts in this region are aligned by stratified cuboidal or columnar epithelium. And the last portion is the main duct of each major salivary gland empties into the oral cavity. It's lined by stratified squamous nancreatinized epithelium. There are also some features that can help you to distinguish the parotid from the submandibular and the lingual glands. That the parotid gland is a branched acinar gland and contains exclusively serous secreting portions called the serous acini. The secretion of this gland is rich in proteins and has a highly amylase activity. There's also the submandibular or submaxillary gland, which is a branched tubular acinar and contains serous and mixed secretory portions. And the last gland is the sublingual gland, which is a branched tubular acinar and contains mixed mucus and serious separated portions. So that is all for today and don't forget to like, subscribe and share all the videos and see you in the next video.